going to be on the right side, there's going to be a kind of a, they're going to be big boulders and an opportunity to kind of ferry back and forth. Um, there are, and some, there are some holes in there, but you can bomb all of them. So if you wanted to, you could just run it straight down the center and bomb the hole. I mean, they're, they're not even going to flip you if you hit them straight, but at this level, I like to make it more interesting. So I like to try to grab every, try to get four eddies before I'm down or ferry back and forth four times. If you want, there's a nice road we can pull out right at the beginning of fault line just to run down and get a view of it. But it's always it's always different. I don't think there's a, yeah, I don't think this level you would not be intimidated by it. Well, who said that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, and Pot Rock is fine. I mean, on, on a different day. What's that? Yeah. It's, you know, the, it's just a little less pronounced. Yeah, so. I, I think it's a, I think it is. I mean, or I've, I've, the hole's bigger, so you're, you're, it'll hold your boat a little bit better. And like, uh, you know, that, uh, that approach, like normally, like the way we came down, like I would come down to the right side hugging that rock a little bit more. But hmm. Well, we're going to have like three thunderstorms this week, I think. Well, part of the reason I was late is I was, uh, there's some neighborhood kids asking about, uh, you know, when Rocco and Mia are going to come back. And part of me is thinking about just doing some man on the street interviews with all the kids in Maryland, just, you know, saying hi to Rocco and, you know, I'm thinking about doing that. Just do some, it's uh iron curtain over there. Nope. Well, it's well. They just traffic them, and then there's some secret hearing. I, um, apparently, there's something that I'm doing wrong. I don't know what it is, because um, the, the therapist said, "Hey, your kids are fine." I don't know if you heard the my voicemail that I posted, but they said, "Hey, Tony, your kids are fine. I have no problems with them, and they're looking forward to Christmas." I go down there to see them for Christmas. It, there's a secret hearing, so. You know, every phone call that I have with them, some form of entrapment. Yeah, well, I mean, my son was old enough to figure out how to figure out my email address online and he sent me an email from school uh, a couple weeks ago and he wanted to know when he had seen me next so what I did is I copied all the adults that were making the decisions on whether or not he could leave Michigan I thought I'd teach him how to carbon copy on an email I said you know great to meet you and I uh, you know in regard to your question the next time you'll be able to see me um, one of these adults is uh, you know, these adults have to make the decision on when the next time it is that you are allowed to see your father. Um, and then at, at that point, Rocco's email was promptly deactivated. So, what's that? I'm sure he's going to figure it out. Yeah, I mean, well, and this has happened before.
Yeah, and well, so Rock was able to find mine. I mean, my email address is not really that hard. It's Tony Calise at Gmail. Yeah. What's that? Yeah. My Twitter handle is pretty easy to find too. It's Tony Calise at Twitter, or at Tony Calise. Yeah. Yeah. I would like to think so, and I, you know, and I don't. I'm not interested in any covert shit. I would like. I would like to have overt justice. I would like, you know, overt accountability. Nothing under the radar. Um, I'm un it's unclear to me. I mean, this is my first time being divorced. Um, I was told that if I paid a bunch of these senior sit or uh, baby boomers over $100,000, that uh, they would file a complaint for divorce for me, and uh, I, I would no longer be married. And that's not true. And I've been held, you know, I remain captive in a, in a very hazardous relationship, as do my children. So there's not really a clear path, but it, it just is, uh, you know, in the small town, their major source of income seems to come from death and deception. They make a lot of their money off of death and deception. So... Like, for example, the, uh, the attorney that's, you know, has all this unprofessional conduct is actually deceased. Obviously, it's not a deceased person. Ah. What's that? My receipts for what? For money that I've saved? Yeah. Um, there are records, um, and I, because like, for example, there's someone, uh, the same person that uses a deceased, his deceased partner to file improper, uh, uh, documents in the court, um, is also, he's an expert in using everyone's identity except his own. So, uh, this guy created, uh, you know, false residency affidavits for Melissa and, and kids. Uh, he uses my social security number to receive income at his office, and he uses his deceased partner's um, uh, uh, identity to to generate those false affidavits. And so there's just a real lack of accountability. There's a real la lack of professional conduct. And that's why I'm saying the money, they make a lot of their money off of, of uh, death and deceit, um, because by using a dead person to, to kind of abuse the system, that's how they can make sure that there's no real professional accountability to be had. Um, I don't know if they do. I'm not sure how you get a Facebook. I mean, I just happened to get one. But my general, uh, my general view of the world is uh, all information eventually gets free. And uh, basically, I believe that they try to make my kids uh, disappear using the 1970s approach, which is steal the baby books and write up some false narrative which worked in the 1970s because fathers didn't have baby books um, and stuff like that. But I've got, you know, I, I have all of our family videos, all of our photos, and it's, it's, you know, one thing, it's obvious that I was involved because that's, you know, the video was there. I was, you know, so I think traditionally a mother's narrative could, could just basically control whatever the kids believe. But if you see like a YouTube video of you with your dad, 
even if your mom said you were never with your dad, he abandoned you, you couldn't help but believe. I would, I would figure like you would have to believe the uh, the video. Yeah. Yeah. But I think. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like uh, uh, if I feel like I can relate a little bit to uh, Minority Report. Um, in uh, in like what like the subplot of that one, like Tom Cruise's kids and you know his family just gets wiped out, and uh, he keeps you know he's got all this high tech family videos where he's able to kind of relive that stuff. And I just figure it, it's a temporary absence. I figure, you know, I'm not dead, and at some point they would have the ability to, to connect with me if they chose to, or they could say fuck off, you know, with whatever. But either way, it would be their choice. As opposed to the relationship they have now, the only reason why they the only reason why they have the relationship with their mom is because she's holding them captive. It was never a choice for them. I'm not sure. That doesn't seem... Yeah, perhaps. I, I don't really know what, you know, how much you can really spoil a kid in Saginaw, Michigan. All right, so here it's kind of a, it's a little bumpy, but there's going to be a couple slot moves where you'll go down and slot to the right. Yeah, so you're going to go down and then go slot to the right. Right there, see that jagged edge? Yeah, so we're going to kind of stay on the, stay on the top side, kind of hug that tree and then zip across that way. And go all the way over so you miss the pinning rock. Or you can go straight down that way. All right, I think there's a fun there's a fun move on the right side here.
Okay, so here there is a, um, we'll set up on the right hand side, we'll grab an eddy on the right. Around the trees. Yeah, around the trees. And if you can, uh, if you can, see if you can stay up and not go down there. So that's the line down there, but see if you can just paddle up here and stay above it. See if you can grab this eddy right here. Try to get that Eddie. Then come over here. Just paddle up. It's not very pushy. Good draw strokes. There you go, back paddle, back paddle. Nice, there you go, float back here. So here, what's cool about this one is you can actually attain up to where you came from. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a couple annoying ones. That rock right there is kind of annoying too. All right, so check this out. You get a chance to use your draw stroke here. Let's see. 